Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we got to be careful not to buy those for here. <laughs> Check what? Make sure it's not the drink. Yeah. The vent or the crayons? The crayons. Ah, I didn't know. He did try to eat them today. He just wanted to come on the floor. That's it. That's it for a He's had over a week down in Germany. He called me the other day, FaceTime me more or less, and showed me where he lived. On. We talked 42 minutes. I didn't talk to him that much in his life. <laughs> he showed his different things. He wanted to FaceTime mom, and he was just showing his apartment. Just look at where he lives and outside, you'd think you were in Mumfordville, and everything looks the same. A few obvious differences. They're close. Yeah, train track goes by, train all the time. But they had, you know, the, uh, not in Germany. Not in Germany. It's just England. England's There's only a handful of countries that drive on the Australia. opposite side. Australia and England. But now Germany drives on the same side we do. People pass our house every day. They're steering on the other side. Not the, ma not the mail carrier. Uh, uh, well, he might, but CF men those little white oh, vehicles. Got they're on the outside. So they got some farm vehicles that are foreign. Yeah. How are you doing? Yeah, Saturday the 20th or 22nd. 
Yes, thank you. It is six o'clock. It's good to have everyone here. It's been a beautiful day here in this part of Kentucky. Uh, of course, Mom's not with us tonight. She was able to make it this morning. I think Erin's probably listening. Just had a text from her. Uh, so, Jerry's Lexington took Abby back. Continue to remember, of course, uh, Mom and Ruby's parents and I do need to mention from time to time, of course, as well, she's doing good, but Mike's mother, Jean Coffey, and her sister, Enola Ziegler, we said was doing much better after her had to do two knee replacements, but she's home and back in 97, doing quite well. Uh, continue to remember Vicki McDaniel and Brad Terry and uh, Vicki's brother-in-law, Mike, did go home. He's doing better, but just sort of not feeling the best now. And Sharon's sister, Denise Miller, and I heard from Stewart, he was at uh, Fort Campbell this morning. And so I don't know if he's come back in or heading on. So Aaron said, yes, she is here. She's listening. So we'll go ahead and get started. Number 518. And good to have Shirley with us tonight. So two services today. <coughs> Well, that does speak a lot. You know, that's really great. Number 518. <clears throat> Though I through the valley of shadow, or mountain, or troubled sea, and off in the darkness have traveled, the Lord has been mindful of me. The Lord has been mindful of me. He blesses and blesses again. My God is the God of the living. How excellent is His name. Much more than my grief and my sorrow. Much more than adversity. Much more than the all I have given, the Lord has been mindful of me. The Lord has been mindful of me. He blesses and blesses again. My God is the God of the living. How excellent is His name. I'm rich, I am saved, I am happy. I've health and prosperity. I have friends, I have doors ever open. The Lord has been mindful of me. The Lord has been mindful of me. He blesses and blesses again. My God is the God of the living. So I did his name. Before our prayer this evening, <clears throat> let's sing, uh, pardon me here. Uh, let's try number 165. I haven't sung this in quite a while. Old song. Remember from years ago. Then we'll ask Larry to lead us in prayer. <clears throat> Number 165. Heart is the gentle... I'm sorry. <clears throat> Hit the wrong words. Heart is the shepherd's voice I hear Out in the desert dark and drear Calling the lambs who've gone astray Far from the shepherds, fall away. Bring them in, bring them in, bring them in from the fields of sin. Bring 
them in, bring them in, bring the little ones to Jesus, who'll go and help this shepherd kind, help him the little lambs to find, who'll bring the lost ones to the Gracious Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for this beautiful day and at the closing of this day, Father, we're thankful that we can assemble in your name to study your word, to sing these songs praising to you and to do those things that are pleasing to you. We're so thankful, Father, that you have given us a good day and a safe day. We're so thankful, Father, that you have been with us and, and uh, kept us safe and given us those things that uh, you saw that we needed. We're so thankful for everything that we have, Father, knowing that we are so richly blessed, but knowing, Father, that the greatest gift of mankind was the gift of your Son and our Savior who died on the cross uh, for the sins of the world. And Father, we're so thankful that, that you were willing to send your only Son and that Jesus was willing to die up on the cross, freely give his life's blood to cleanse us of our sins and, and give us a home in heaven someday if we live a life that's pleasing to you. And we pray, Father, that each and every one that's assembled here this evening, those who are listening, uh, would someday have a home in heaven with you and we pray that we pray Father that you would forgive us of our many sins knowing that we are weak and sinful but Father we know that you're there to forgive us because we know that that we are weak and, and uh, we do those things that are wrong but Father we know that that the devil has no power over us as long as, as we live for you and Father we're so thankful that you have given us the freedoms that we have to worship you, to serve you and to do those things that would be pleasing to you. We're thankful, Father, for the good health that we enjoy, but we know that there are many who are not with us because of illness. Father, we pray that you would continue to be with them and bless them. We pray, Father, that you would continue to be with Shirley Edwards and bless her. We're thankful, Father, that Shirley Parsons is among us this evening. We pray that you would continue to be with her and bless her. We pray, Father, that you would continue to, to bless Alice and heal her. We pray, Father, that you would would be with uh, uh, Brad Terry, that you would bless him. We pray, Father, that you would be with Sharon and Sharon's sister and bless them and heal them. We pray, Father, that you would uh, would be with Vicki and her brother-in-law, that you would bless them and heal them. We pray, Father, that you would be with, with Ruby's parents, that you would be with them, Father, and, and uh, bless them as only you can. We pray, Father, that you would be with us as we study your word this evening, that we can write devise your truths, that we can gain the wisdom and understanding that we need, Father, to always uh, do those things uh, and always study your word in such a way that you would be pleasing with us and pleased with us and that, that you would help us to understand your word fully and completely. Pray, Father, that you'd be with those who are traveling, that you'd be with, with Jerry as he takes uh, Abby back to Lexington. We pray, Father, that you would continue to be with Stuart as he, travel, Stuart as he travels the nation's highways, that you'd be with him, Father, and bless him. Pray, Father, that you would be with all those Christians throughout the world. 
pray that you would be with us as we study your word, as you strengthen us, and that you would help us to grow stronger, that you'd be with us, Father, and that we would be pleased on, uh, that we would be pleasing unto you. Be with us and forgive us, strengthen us, and find in heaven, save us, Father, is our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. I'm glad Larry remembered to mention Alice. I forgot to mention her, and I think I mentioned Ruby's parents, but I did hear, uh, all right, Sharon just text, well, a few minutes ago, that she's listening from home. Stuart's in Fort Campbell to unload tomorrow, so we have, and Aaron, as I said, is listening. So, and Mom's be listening at home. <clears throat> Let's sing two more, and then we'll have our lesson tonight's Matthew 23. I probably won't do the whole chapter. It's, uh, I think, 39 verses. I'll have to look. It's right at 40 verses, give or take a little bit. Number 192. 192. Is it for me, dear Savior, the glory and thy rest? For me so weak and sinful, oh, shall I be so blessed? O oh, Savior, my Redeemer, what can I but adore? And I and praise Thee, and love Thee evermore. Is it for me Thy welcome, Thy gracious entry? For me Thy coming blessed, for me so full of sin. O oh, Savior, my Redeemer, what can I but adore? And magnify and praise Thee, and love Thee evermore. O oh, Savior, precious Savior, my heart is at thy feet. I bless thee and I love thee, and thee I long to meet. O oh, Savior, my Redeemer, what can I but adore? And magnify and praise thee, and love thee evermore. I'll be with thee forever, and never grieve thee more. Dear Savior, I must praise thee, and love thee evermore. Oh, Savior, my Redeemer, what can I but adore? And magnify and praise Thee, and love Thee evermore. Number 134. And Jerry is listening as well as he drives, so we have quite a few listening in tonight. Number 134, then we'll have our lesson. God is the fountain when 10,000 blessings flow. To Him my love, my health and friend, and The comforts he affords are neither few nor small. He is the source of fresh delight, my portion and my all. He fills my heart with joy, my lips attunes for praise, and to His glory I devote the hymn of my days. 
mark, if you will, number 674. Uh, 667. We did 674 Wednesday night. Number 667. Are you coming to Jesus tonight? Turn, if you will, to Matthew 23. I'll probably only go through about half the chapter tonight. I, I think I'm going to go through verse 22. And so unless something really changes. And it's good to have each one tonight. Looks like 13. I was doing a quick count. Is that what you had, Ruby, in your tally? 13. And so, I appreciate the kindness of Erin. We were going to Louisville yesterday, and she texted me and told me they were having a taco and burrito supper that night, and having the preacher and his wife and the congregation I think she said they had 18 over she sent me pictures of the meat and I told her I said it only makes the pain worse <laughs> uh, tell me all about the food and can't be there and I'm sure Aaron chuckled then but I'm glad that Aaron feels good enough to host thanks for the, the congregation there because she was basically an invalid for so long so I'm really glad that uh, they were able to uh, to do that and Aaron I don't know I know you're listening in today the 8th September 8th, it was uh, four months ago today that they were here, May the 8th, I think, uh, on that, when, I think that was a Wednesday night, May the 8th, it was, and it's been four months ago today, uh, that's hard to believe, time gets away, third of a year, but let's go ahead and look at this chapter, at least 22 verses, this is one of the easiest chapters of Matthew to preach from, I mean, they're all easy enough, but this one, you got so much material that you, it just talks about not being hypocritical. So let's look at least at 22 verses. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples. Don't miss out on what's being said there. He had his disciples, but there was a multitude. So that indicates the multitude wasn't necessarily what? His followers, his disciples. You had the multitude, but a lot were not his disciples. A lot were just people who were not interested or trying to entrap him and people probably just curious and I'll be quite honest probably a lot of people he'd already fed thousands probably a lot of people looking for food I mean you know that that's understandable there's nothing necessarily wrong with that because food does draw people to a congregation a lot of times I mean you want to be there for spiritual food but the Lord has used that as a way to reach people then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples. Disciples were probably a subset of the multitude, of course. Saying, The scribes and Pharisee, Pharisees sat in Moses' seat. I almost said Pharisees. <laughs> the scribes and the Pharisees sat in Moses' seat. The scribes were the ones, you can see in the Greek, you can probably tell them that this says Moses. It's Moses here. Upon, like the seat of Moses said, Ah. Uh, the scribes and the Pharisees. The word Greek word for scribe is, and you'll know the Greek. It's grammatis, like grammar, the the ones that write and keep the law, and uh, one skilled in Jewish law and theology, a scribe, expert, scholars, also a town's official, secretary, a town clerk. That word's used in Acts 19:35. It's a grammatis, one who would write down things, and so, and obviously we get grammar from it about our. Our language so the scribes were the writers of the law you know the uh, scholarly ones of writing and keeping reproducing it the Pharisees really interpreted the law they were the religious leaders of the day though very falsely I'll read the Pharisees from the Hebrew one is set up who is set apart a separatist a Pharisee a member or follower of the sect of the Pharisees an organized society of the Jews who claimed authority in interpreting the scriptures and setting rules for law observance in daily life. We'll see they made law like you had to wash your hands before you eat. That was not a law, but they made it one. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but it wasn't a sinful thing if you didn't. And so they were the ones who really interpreted and made laws for people to follow. And you'll see how they did throughout this chapter. And Jesus is really letting people know, don't be like them. They spoke good things, but didn't do. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. 
but do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. Uh, this verse is saying they don't practice what they preach. Whatever they're telling you to do, do it. They were speaking good things, you know, obviously from the law. There were things they had, like washing of the hands that were tradition, but still, do not after their works, for they say and do not. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders. But they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. So they were really requiring people to do a lot, maybe to give a lot, to really work in the temple, uh, to see to the sick. They were commanding a lot of things, but they themselves would not do. And Jesus taught service, not being served. You know, washing the disciples' feet. We don't wash feet today because that was not given as a law. He said, I've given you an example. He actually uses the word example in English there. That what you've seen me do, you do. A service to others, not being served. But the Pharisees were the opposite. They would dictate heavy burdens, hard to bear, grievous to be borne. But they wouldn't move them with one of their fingers. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments. Whatever they did, they wanted to be seen of men. You know, it'd be an example, you know, say, I know Shirley a lot of times needs help, maybe getting out to the vehicle, hold on to a little. Mom needs a wheelchair. If I got mom to the back and said, I look up and down the street, I can't take you to the truck yet and help you in because what? No one's looking, Ruby said. Isn't that what you say? No one's looking. I'll get you to the car as soon as we get more people out here looking. That's exactly what they did. Can you imagine? That? Surely we'll get you in in a minute. There's not enough people gathered to see. Well, that's ridiculous. Really what we ought to do is don't try to hide. Don't try to be seen. Jesus said, you know, uh, let your works be seen that may glorify. Just do, and if people see, fine. If they don't, fine. I'm just thankful that on October 22nd, 2017, no one was watching me get mom to the car. I remember that day well, uh, because that was the day right before we flew to uh, Minnesota on October 23rd, which is a day I tend to remember because mom told me I was born then. And, uh, but it was October 22nd, 2017. Everybody had gone, Ru except me and mom. Ruby's down at Rite Aid, everybody had left. I set mom on the porch out there of the church building reached around to close the door, reached around to get mom, she was gone, nowhere. Well, the wheelchair had rolled off and she was going down the side, it was going left, right, left, right. She got it stopped, but she had to put her feet down to stotch it and it really put a gash in her leg. And uh, I'm thankful I didn't wait for my works to be seen. And so he threw his mom against the truck there. No, she didn't even hit the truck. I truly believe the Lord sent angels, maybe a couple that night, to guide the wheelchair because she never went off the edge. It kept going left and right. I do not know how she didn't. But I was always super careful after that. It was my fault. I didn't put on the brake. But she was sitting on level ground, but not that level. And she was gone when I looked about <laughs> I still remember what she said to this day. It wasn't really words. It was just hollering. And uh, she, oh, she said, stop because she thought I was pushing her as a joke a little fast. I, I didn't even know she was gone. So we had the doctor and I told, when Ruby, she came walking from right, I said, oh Ruby, a horrible thing has happened. She thought mom was dead out in the grass or something. And, and so I'd let mom go, but thankfully she wasn't hurt more than a pretty good cut on her leg that did heal up with time. But it made me a lot more careful after that. But I can't imagine just say, I can't get you out there yet, we need a crowd so it can be seen. That would be, that would be awful. That, that would be my reward, you know, that just that. The Lord would not like that. Do for people, and if they see you, don't try to hide either. Well, there's people over there. I don't want them to see me helping you. That, that's not right either. You know, the Lord said, you know, let your light shine that people may see your good works. It's okay to be seen. I do want to put that in, that they may see your good works, but don't try to make them see uh, Matthew let, uh, 5, 16, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works. Don't try to make it shine. If they see it, they see it. And if they don't, they don't. Just do. And it makes it easy. You don't have to plan. So that, uh, you know, I think really 
exemplifies well. Then the Lord made it easy that we don't have to do one way or the other. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries. That's a word we probably need to define right there. There's a Greek word for phylactery right there. Ah. Uh, <coughs> let's see. The hard. No, I'm sorry. That's to break broad. There's phylactery right there. A phylactery was like a charm or amulet. It was worn by Jews during prayer. Containers or small boxes encasing certain scriptures. And it would be, I'm looking up here. Someone might say, if I hold up my Bible here, well, Marty's not quite as spiritual as others because his Bible is what? Hold up your Bible, Kathy, I can tell. Well, hers isn't too big. I was looking at someone with a, Larry's got a big old thick Bible. And someone, well, I'm more spiritual than you because my Bible is what? Bigger, larger than yours. Well, Sandy said worn, and that would be part of it. I hope the Bible is worn. But they would make broad their phylacteries. They had scriptures they would wear. And so the people that had more scripture on them, they looked more spiritual to others, you know, carrying a bigger Bible. And that, that has nothing to do with it. They actually probably got this from Deuteronomy, where it said to, to wear the scriptures, to tie it up on you. And... Uh, Trying to think where that's at. Uh, I'll never find it now, but to wear the scripture upon them. And uh, I don't even think it says where. They couldn't wear wool and linen together. Bind them upon you. But they were to, uh, yeah, right here. Talk about these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. Thou shalt teach them thy children, Deuteronomy 6 6. This is a good, you know, I might write this up as a bulletin article. I just wrote the one for, as a matter of fact, I, I rarely write on Sunday, but I, I did today. I, I wrote a bulletin article for, I'm down to November 17th is where I'm at. But this would be a good one. All of them are good, but a little lesson here. The words of the Bible, teach them unto your children. Talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk, and when you lie down, when you rise up. You should be talking about spiritual things all the time. Bind them up for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. Thou shalt write them upon the post of the house, upon thy gates. I think that was all, you know, just a metaphor of that it should always be there. They couldn't write them on their heart, that's for sure. And so they would wear scriptures. Phylactery was a container that had scriptures in it. And they would make them broad and wide to look more spiritual. You know, well, his scripture container is very small. He must not be very spiritual. Well, it has nothing to do with it. And enlarge the border of their garments. It's because that's where they put the scriptures. <coughs> and so they would wear special clothing to make themselves look more spiritual and wear more scripture upon themselves, which is ridiculous because it has nothing to do with your spirituality, but they equated it with it. But Jesus is saying this means nothing. And also, here's what the Pharisees did. They loved the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogue. Usually whenever you have a seat at a table, there's usually a head. If you look and see like the president at a state dinner, he's always usually in the middle. And everybody flanks him. They always give him the chief seat. And it's just understandable because of his rank. But they always wanted the uppermost rooms, the best rooms, the chief seats in the synagogue. They always wanted what is best. And greetings in the market. They wanted people to greet them and salute them and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. And that is the Greek word for Rabbi. It just means master or teacher. And uh, Jesus was called Rabbi by Mary whenever she saw him right after the resurrection. But they loved these greetings to be called by these titles. I, it was in this general area I saw a denomination had a preacher's name listed, gave his name, but it was Reverend Brother Pastor Doctor. <laughs> it had like four things in front, then gave his name, and which is ridiculous. You know, none of those, you might have a doctorate of law, but I wouldn't want a word on a church sign, even if I did. 
But then he tells them, be ye not, be not ye, but be not ye called rabbi. I never understood how Jewish leaders of today could actually call themselves that. When this is as plain, I mean, how can you get plainer? Don't be called rabbi. For one is your master, even Christ. And all your brethren. Don't use titles to exalt yourself above one another. You know, of like, you know, spiritual titles. There's groups that use father in a spiritual way or rabbi and other things. Reverend? Yeah. I was about to say And so that's used very commonly. And so, don't use these titles. I've told you this a thousand or a hundred times. But, you know, years ago at the funeral home, they asked me what I wanted to be called. I told them just Marty. And they've always respected that. Whenever I have a funeral, they don't put anything except Marty Edwards. And that's my name. I don't want a title or any kind of demarcations, anything any different. Because I, I, I shouldn't. And call no man your father upon the earth. For one is your father which is in heaven. These two verses alone knock down Judaism and Catholicism of the titles they use. And of course, their religion is not following the Bible. But you, ought, you have to use common sense. We have fathers. Honor your father and mother. He's talking about religiously calling someone your father. One is your father which is in heaven. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. And so he's just talking about religious titles here. And they love that. Be saluted by this. I'm sure ranks of titles and the such like. I think there's titles that we need to, uh, you know, address people as. And a lot of times the context. When I was in college... If a professor had a doctorate, I would call him a doctor, so-and-so. And there'd be maybe one or two that would act closer to my age that actually ask me to address them by their first name, so I would, but I wouldn't do that until they asked me to. There's people that deserve it, but we weren't in a religious setting. It was a classroom setting, which is totally different. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. Take the lowest title. Take the lowest seat. Do things to not be seen, do things to serve. And Jesus did. And, you know, and so that's what we need to exemplify. If you want to be the greatest, be the servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. So, you know, wait and let the Lord lift you up. You know, we're told to humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. I probably would hurt to look up that verse. Uh, humble yourself. First Peter five six. Well, James four ten. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and He shall lift you up. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time. So we humble ourselves. Well, how do you do that? Well, look at the context. Don't want the chief seats. Don't want the high positions. Don't always want the titles. Don't always want people doing for you and you just come in. Take the low things. Don't be seen. Just be in the background and just do. Humble yourself <coughs> and you shall be exalted. And so he addresses this right to the scribes and Pharisees. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. And there's the Greek word for hypocrite right there. It literally means a pretender. It, it literally was an actor, a stage player. It was one who, who did that, but figuratively used as one who, are, who was pretending to be righteous. But woe unto you. Woe is an interesting word. It's one of only, what, four or five terms in the Bible that's used three times in a row. row. Woe, woe, woe in Revelation to the inhabitants of the earth, for the devil is coming down to, unto you having great wrath, for you know that you have a short time. Woe is a terrible thing that comes upon you and it's extreme displeasure retributive pain and of course uh, it's just talking about being lost but woe unto you scribes and pharisees hypocrites for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men for you neither go in yourselves neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in they were keeping themselves out of heaven but they were keeping others out as well by the way that they were and so it's you know, a danger to do that. If you teach and are like this, you often will keep people 
from obeying the gospel. So that's, they weren't helping others. They were hurting themselves and others. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore you shall receive the greater damnation. They were actually going to receive harsher punishment because of the way they were. Everybody, so many thought they were great religious people, but they were receiving the harsher punishment. They would devour widows' houses, take you know money from widows and such like, and for a pretense make long prayer. Just pray to be heard and seen. Therefore you shall receive the greater damnation. <coughs> Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, Hypocrites, for you cop a sea and land to make one proselyte. They would go everywhere to try to convert one person to them. And when he is made, you make him twofold, or we could say double more the child of hell than yourselves. You go everywhere to convert one person, and you make him twice as worse than you are. Very plain what he's saying here. If any scribes and Pharisees were in the multitude, and I feel like they were, he's addressing them. They were probably really embarrassed and should have really felt the flush of blood run to their face at this point. Woe unto you. Well, he said that so many times. This is the fourth time, isn't it? Woe, then woe, woe, then this one. Woe unto you, you blind guides. People who are guides need to be able to see. They need to be able to help others look. A lot of times people are do need someone to blind them or to guide them if they're blind. Uh, maybe another person or people that have seeing eye dogs and the such like. You can't have a, a guide that's blind. They have to be able to see clearly. They were guiding others, but they were blind. Woe unto you, you blind guides, which say, Whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing. But whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. They were making promises that if they said it one way, Oh, it, they had to do it. But if they said it another way, they didn't have to do it. I know that even children, it used to be a common thing when I was in school. Well, I don't have to do that. I had my fingers, what? Crossed. Shirley and I are from the same old time. People would think if you had your fingers crossed, you didn't have to keep a promise. Where did that come from? Probably something descended from Pharisees. But it, you swore by the temple, didn't you? Well, you don't have to keep that. But did you swear by the gold in the temple? You've got to do that. And you'll see they actually had it backwards. That, you know, the, you, the way they would swear. But they would do this. They would make promises they didn't have to keep because of the way they said it. You fools and blind. For whether is the gold, whether is greater, the temple or the temple that sanctifies the gold. And you'll see they actually had it backwards. The temple was greater than the gold. The temple sanctified the gold. The things that were used in the temple were made special and holy. They were sanctified. So gold just used in commerce wasn't as special as gold that was maybe brought and used in service to the Lord, the vessels made. But what is greater, the gold or the temple that sanctified the gold? Well, it's obvious it's the temple because it made the gold special. But if you look back, they did, the back, they did it backwards. The temple they didn't pay attention to. But it was the gold that they paid attention to, no doubt, because their hearts. They should have done it the other way if they were going to do it. But, of course, you shouldn't do that anyway. Just keep a promise. And it's told, you're told within the Bible, let your yea be yea and your nay, nay. And so, I've always liked that. And I know, obviously, he wasn't just saying we can simply answer yes or no without any commentary. But our answers need to be simple. <laughs> Many times, I tried to practice this a little bit more. Words do help. The Lord gave us words. And just yesterday, I think it was, I was texting somebody, and I had a pretty long response. And I told Ruby, I said, they don't need to hear all that. I erased it and put, yes. You know, just, that's enough. And I don't always do it, but a simple answer. One time I was, and Ruby, this hadn't been more than a month or two ago, I was texting someone, I was voice dictating. I've learned I'd better go back and proofread. And she said, they don't need to hear all that. I said, you know, you're right. Raced it and just put yes or no, whatever the answer was. A simple, you don't need to add a lot. And so, 
the swearing by that you don't need all that just yes no yay or nay that we will just go through verse 22 because we're about out of time they would also say and whosoever shall swear by the altar it is nothing but whosoever sweareth by the gift that is upon it he is guilty you'll see their common theme they were interested in the gold and the gift upon the altar not the things that made them holy they would the altar didn't mean anything to them but it was the gift you fools and blind for whether is greater the gift or the altar that sanctifies the gift whoso therefore shall swear by the altar sweareth by it and by all things thereon if you promise or say you'll do this by one thing it's it includes everything you don't divide it out that i don't do this because i promised this way and whosoever shall swear by the temple sweareth by it and by him that dwelleth therein if you make a promise you're making it to god whenever you did by the temple and the last verse I'm going to look at tonight. And he that shall swear by heaven sweareth by the throne of God and by him that setteth thereon. And of course, we know we're not to make these kind of oaths and the such type, but they were big on it and very legalistic oaths. Oh, I've got to pay them so much money. Well, how did you promise them to pay? I did it by the temple. Oh, you're fine. You don't have to keep it. Just let it go. You didn't swear by the gold. Oh, I didn't even mention gold. Okay, you're clear of that debt then. And they would do things like that. The whole thing was, if you make a promise, an oath to do something, you're doing it to God. But we'll stop there and pick up next week. And I really, we're going to see about straining at a gnat, swallowing a camel. A little pre. What what does a gnat and a camel have in common? They were both unclean animals. You couldn't eat either one. I've never eaten any camel. I'm sure I've eaten a lot of gnats while riding bicycles, especially. And, uh, but they were unclean animals. And so we'll talk a little bit about that next week. So we'll pick up, we went Matthew 23, 1 through 22. So turn, if you will, to the song that was announced. 667, are you coming to Jesus tonight? Don't be pharisaical and let's just mark time. And, you know, and if we're careful, if we're not careful, we can slip into doing that. Like we'll rush into services, oh, I've got to get there before Lord's Supper is over. We'll feel like as long as we do that, we're okay. Or I've got to just make sure I give a little bit. And everything needs to be from the heart. Our worship and the sincerity of what we do. And not just slip into <coughs> doing just to be doing. And not just to go through the act, but our heart is into it. And so when, as we become, I think, truly converting closer to the Lord, our hearts are. In a moment, we'll sing this song. I know all the adults. Well, everybody here, we have no young children here, but obey the Lord in baptism. You believed on the Lord, repented of your sins. You confess his name. Some time ago, you were, many of you, most of you were baptized long before I knew you. Some I baptized. And, but yet, if we're not careful, sometimes we can drift away a little. And so are we coming to Jesus tonight? We just need repentance and prayer. Let's sing the first verse of 667 as we stand. The voice of the Savior says, Come, the cross where he died is in sight. And now at the cross there is room. Are you coming to Jesus tonight? Are you coming to Jesus tonight? Are you coming? to Jesus tonight. The bride and the Spirit invite. Are you coming to Jesus tonight? Now be seated, please. Who needs the Lord's Supper? Mike, does anyone else? Taylor, you want to take care of that?
die for us. In Lord's name. Amen. Turn, if you will, as a closing song, number 19. Let's sing the second verse. I often use this song, but it has a lot of verses, so pick different ones. It's good to have each one here this evening. We'll sing the second verse in just a moment. I'll dismiss this in prayer. Hope everyone can be here Wednesday evening. I think it's 2 Chronicles 30 we're looking at. We'll check the calendar here. 2 Chronicles 30. Is there anything else that needs to be announced? If not, let us stand and sing the second verse. <clears throat> Swift to its close out life's little day Earth's joys grow dim and glories pass away Change and decay Let us pray. Our fathers, we come to thee in prayer. We're thankful for this service we've had tonight. We pray we can learn from these passages and, and to do things of your word, but not to be pharisaical in it, to humbly do it, and to just follow your word in simplicity and to be servants and not to want to be seen or lord over others. Forgive us of our sins, be it those we mentioned earlier, Mom and Alice, Ruby's parents. Continue to bless Aaron and uh, we're thankful that Sharon could be back with us this morning. Uh, bless her sister Denise. Give Stuart safety on the highways. Be with Vicki McDaniel and her brother-in-law Mike. Brad Terry and others may be unknown to us. Give Jerry a safe trip as he travels back. Continue to bless Matthew and his year in Germany. It all goes well and safe. Forgive us of our sins. Bring us together again safely Wednesday as we continue our studies. Finally, save us in heaven. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Mike, you doing all right? Yeah, doing fine. Thank you for that. Oh, you're welcome. $10 cash. Yes.